The ocean is home to more than one million species, and over a quarter of them are dependent on coral reefs. However, coral reefs around the world are dying at alarming rates. Coral reefs are some of the most diverse ecosystems in the world, and because of this they are often nicknamed as rainforests of the sea. They are the world's oldest and largest living structures. Corals are made up of small organisms called polyps that feed on microscopic plankton. This makes them closely related to jellyfish and anemone species. Polyps attach themselves onto rocks on the seafloor and then divide into thousands of clones. Over time, they leave behind skeletal structures made up of calcium carbonate. These skeletons become reefs that serve as habitat and shelter for many aquatic species. Some coral reefs alive today are as old as 50 million years old. The oldest coral reefs existed over 450 million years ago, making them twice as old as dinosaurs and humans combined. The high levels of biodiversity in coral reefs are extremely important for the health of ecosystems and the welfare of humans. Its ecological benefits include everything from cleaning water and absorbing chemicals to providing oxygen for us to breathe. Its genetic diversity prevents diseases and allows stronger resilience against environmental disturbances. Coral reefs are so important that over 25% of aquatic species live on these ecosystems, which barely cover less than 1% of the ocean floor. For humans, its biodiversity provides a large range of food and natural resources that can even be used to help discover medical breakthroughs. The Great Barrier Reef is the largest living structure spanning over 1,600 miles. It was established as a national park in 1975 and eventually designated as a World Heritage Site by the United Nations. A World Heritage Site is a recognized landmark of cultural and physical significance. They are legally protected by international treaties. Over 2 million people from around the world visit the Great Barrier Reef each year. This contributes about $1.5 billion every year to the Australian economy and supports over 67,000 jobs related to tourism. On a yearly global scale, coral reefs are valued at $30 billion for providing goods and services. In fact, almost 500 million people rely on coral reefs as their source of food and livelihood. These ecosystems protect shorelines against powerful waves and tropical storms, which saves billions of dollars in property damages. On the medical side, coral extracts have been used to develop treatments for asthma, arthritis, cancer, and heart disease. As a result of the Industrial Revolution, rapid urbanization and rising populations have increasingly threatened the natural environment, especially the highly sensitive coral reefs. Unfortunately, over half of the world's coral reefs are being threatened by many factors, such as unsustainable fishing practices, pollution, and climate change. Unsustainable fishing practices include destructive fishing methods that disturb aquatic ecosystems for a long time, or even permanently. Dynamite fishing is a dangerous Southeast Asian fishing practice where they detonate explosives into the ocean and collect the fish carcasses. Another destructive fishing practice is sodium cyanide fishing, where fishermen spray this toxic chemical into the water in order to stun the fish and capture them. They leave behind traces of the chemical which slowly poisons the ecosystem. The most detrimental fishing practice to coral reefs is bottom trawling, where fishermen use nets that can be as large as football fields to graze along the ocean floor, destroying everything in its path. Sometimes even bycatch occurs, where unwanted species are accidentally caught within the nets. Another form of unsustainable fishing is known as over-exploitation, or when species are harvested faster than their natural repopulation rates. 
Coral mining is also another dangerous form of exploitation, where it's very popular for coral to be harvested for its high volume of calcium and limestone. They are collected either dead or alive for decoration in aquariums, homes, and even used as jewelry. The commoditized use of coral reefs is very dangerous for the ecosystem because coral barely grows less than one inch a year. Pollution comes in many dangerous forms such as oil spills, washed up fertilizer, and waste accumulation. For the past half century, plastic and other non-biodegradable trash have accumulated in the Pacific Ocean to form what is now known as the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Overall, polluting the ocean has become so severe there is six times as much particles of plastic than there is plankton. The massive pollution uptake has greatly contributed to the rate at which climate change is occurring. Climate change has caused sea temperatures to rise above 1 degree Celsius and oceans are experiencing what is called ocean acidification. This occurs when excessive amounts of carbon dioxide is absorbed by the seawater, which then reduces the pH levels and destabilizes the marine environment. When coral reefs undergo traumatic events such as sudden rising sea temperatures, they begin to bleach. They release the algae from their tissues when they are stressed, and without it, it leaves the coral skeleton vulnerable to disease and bleach white. Another threat coral reefs face is reckless tourism. With so many yearly visitors to coastal attractions, such as the Great Barrier Reef, there is much room for detrimental mistreatment of coral reefs. For example, many cruise ships improperly anchor on top of reefs and irreversibly damage the ecosystem. Also, when tourists go scuba diving without understanding how to properly treat coral, they endanger them by touching and disturbing these delicate species. For centuries, coral reefs have survived tens of thousands of natural changes to its environment, but due to the significant amount of human disturbance, these crucial ecosystems are subjected to stressful conditions. In order to protect the remaining coral reefs and stimulate new growth, people must be conscientious of their destructive behavior and practice more conservative methods. The government can implement long-term conservation laws such as enforcing reserves that can legally protect the aquatic environment and improve currently implemented conservation laws. Individuals can take part in conserving coral reefs through practicing safer fishing methods, reducing harmful tourism, reducing their carbon footprint in recycling, and lastly, by donating to organizations that work to protect the environment. The world has already lost over 27% of the world's reefs, and if action isn't taken, over 60% of these reefs will be dead within the next 30 years. Every individual action matters, even if it's the slightest change.